Good evening, folks. This is your boy Kamal once again, and it looks like I've written the derivative operator in the wrong place. Or have I? Whatever the case, let's try to make sense of what's written here. We have e to the d by dx, that's the derivative operator with respect to x, of some function f of x. Okay, cool. What would this thing even mean? What would this operator, this differential operator, do to a function? Let's explore that. So I have played around with some functional analysis stuff in the past. I mean, I defined, I made videos on uh, the exponential function applied to a matrix field, the cosine of a matrix field, et cetera, et cetera. And we're just going to work along those lines. So we could define this differential operator in analogy to how we define the exponential function as a Maclaurin series. So that seems fun. We have e to the x which can be expanded as the sum over the non-negative integers n, of x to the n divided by n factorial. So in analogy, we define the operator e to the d, where d here is the derivative with respect to x operator, as the sum over n of d to the n, that's the nth order derivative, divided by n factorial. Okay, that looks cool, but how exactly does this thing act on some given function? Well, we know that derivative operators, that is derivative, uh, that is derivatives of any order, are all linear transforms, and we know what happens when we sum two linear transforms. Say we have a linear transform t plus a linear transform s, and we add them and apply the linear transform to some vector v belonging to some vector field on which the two linear transforms are defined, we would get t of v plus s of v. So that means with all these d to the n's being linear transforms themselves, applying the exponential, uh, the exponential derivative to some function f of x results in the sum over the non-negative integers n, of d to the n of f as in the nth order derivative with respect to x of the function f divided by n factorial. And this looks pretty cool. Let's look at some examples to get a feel for what this operator does to some function and see if we can generalize it. We'll start off simple. We'll start off with the exponential function. So let's go for example one where f of x is the exponential function, the good old exponential function, e to the x. So we have e to the d applied to the function e to the x. So that means we have the sum over n of d to the n of e to the x divided by n factorial. And we all know what happens, right? I mean, she's the derivative operator he's the exponential function, and then there's this text in the meme that says, I can change him with my love, and we all know that's not going to happen. So what we get for each derivative is just e to the x. So we have the sum over n of e to the x divided by n factorial. And we can take out the e to the x term because it's independent of the index variable n. So we have, terribly sorry about that, we have the sum over n of 1 by n factorial. And recall exactly what the Maclaurin series for the exponential function looks like, and this would look like e to the x with x being 0. So this is just e to... Uh, no, sorry about that. That would be x being equal to 1. Yeah, right. So e to the x, sum x to the n, n factorial. Yeah, that's x equal to 1 terribly. Sorry about that. So this is just e to the 1. And that means we have e to the x times e to the 1. And that would be e to the x plus 1. So that means the derivative, the exponential derivative operator applied to the exponential function e to the x just ships the argument by one unit. This result is actually pretty cool because 
I didn't specify what X is. X could be a real number or it could be a complex number. Recall that for the exponential function in the complex realm, e to the z, the Laurent series expansion is exactly the same, looks exactly the same as a Maclaurin series for the real valued z case. So let's replace x by i to the x. In that case, we get e to the d applied to e to the i x, and that would be the sum over n of what exactly? We have d to the n of e to the i x divided by n factorial. And when we apply the derivative operator once, we get i. Apply it again, we get i squared. Apply it three times, we get i cubed. You get the idea. So that means we have the sum over n of i to the n times e to the i x divided by n factorial. And again, just factor out the e to the i x term. And we're left with the sum over n of i to the n divided by n factorial. And this thing here is exactly what e to the i looks like in the series expansion form. So this implies that e to the d of e to the i x equals e to the i x times e to the i or e to the i x plus one. Again, we see the same shift. And this is really, really cool because we know that the exponential function, the complex exponential function e to the i x can be expanded using Euler's wonderful formula, whereby we have e to the d applied to cosine x plus i times sine x, and this equals e to the, wait, let me expand this, I have cosine of x plus 1 plus i times the sine of x plus 1, and this implies that e to the d of cosine x equals cosine x plus 1, and e to the d of sine x equals sine of x plus 1. Again, we see a shift in the argument by one unit. Okay, so we're done with the exponential function, the trig function, sine and cosine. What about power functions? So we have f of x this time defined as x to the k. So if we apply e to the d to x to the k, we have the sum over n of d to the n of x to the k divided by n factorial, correct? Now, what exactly would the nth order derivative of x to the k evaluate to? Well, all derivatives of order higher than k would be zero. So that means all we have to do is sum from n equals zero to k. What exactly would we get? Well, we just have to apply the power rule successively, giving us k times k minus 1, times k minus 2, so on and so forth, k minus n plus 1 of x to the n, uh, x to the k minus n, right? Yep, that's exactly what we have, divided by n factorial. Now, what exactly is that thing in the numerator? It could be written as a factorial. So we have the sum from n equals 0 to k, and this would be exactly k factorial divided by k minus n factorial. We're dividing this by n factorial, and we have x to the k minus n. Okay, that's quite a bit going on, but we know exactly what this thing is. This here is k factorial divided by n factorial times k minus n factorial, which is n choose k. Okay, cool. So that means we have the sum from n equals zero to k of n choose k. Oh wait, wait, I think I got this one wrong. Uh, yeah, it's k choose n, terribly sorry about that. So it's k choose n, x to the k minus n, and this here would be the binomial expansion for 1 plus x to the k. Okay, cool. So we see, again, the derivative 
the exponential derivative operator shifts the argument by one unit. Okay, now what about a more generalized example? I'm talking about we have a function f that's holomorphic. So if we have a function that if we have a function that's holomorphic, that means it can be expanded as a Maclaurin series. So f of x can be expanded as the sum over the non-negative integers k of f order k derivative at zero divided by k factorial times x to the k. So if we apply our exponential derivative operator to the function f of x, we're applying e to the d to the sum over k of f order k derivative at zero divided by k factorial times x to the k. That means we have the sum over k of f order k derivative at zero divided by k factorial times the exponential derivative of x to the k, and we all know what that works out to. This thing here is just 1 plus x to the k. So that means we have the sum over k of f order k derivative at 0 divided by k factorial times 1 plus x to the k. And this here is the series expansion for f of x plus 1. So we see that our pattern works for any holomorphic function. And that's pretty cool too. And what about the properties of this operator itself? I mean, properties as an operator. Does it have a product rule or a quotient rule that's either better or worse than the product rule and quotient rule for the actual derivative? Let's find out. So what happens when we apply the exponential derivative to a product of functions that is f times g of x? Well, let's expand it and find out. We have the sum over n of d to the n of f times g divided by n factorial. And what exactly is the nth order derivative of a product of functions? Well, it's strikingly similar to a binomial series expansion, wherein we have the sum over k from 0 to n of n choose k f order k derivative times g order n minus k derivative. Okay, cool. So this implies that e to the d times f e to the g e to the d of f g of x equals the sum over n of the sum over k from 0 to n of 1 by n factorial times n choose k, what is wrong with me, f order k derivative times g order n minus k derivative. And let's play around with these factorial terms we have. So we have n choose k. n choose k can be expanded as n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. And we have this 1 by n factorial thing be multiplied with it, so there's some nice cancellation. And this implies that e to the d of f g of x, I got it right the first time. So we have the sum over the non-negative integers n, and the sum from k equals 0 to n, of f order k derivative divided by k factorial times g order n minus k derivative divided by n minus k factorial. Now I want to switch up the order of the summation operators, but we're going to have to be careful here because one of them is a finite sum where one index is essentially a function of another. So let's draw an n-axis here and a k-axis up there. So n runs from 0 to infinity, and k runs from 0 to n, so the upper limit for k is n. So if n equals 0, then you just have one k term, that's the k equal to 0 term. If n equals 1, then you have two k terms, you have k equals 0 and k equals 1. Similarly, you have 0, 1, and 2 when n equals 2. And this goes on quite well. 
all the way up to n equals k, all the way to the line n equals k. Now, n is supposed to run from 0 to infinity, so if I switch up the order of these summation operators, then my k variable is supposed to run from 0 to infinity. That makes perfect sense. But what about the index variable n? We see that it will only run on and above this line. So that means the sum over n should start at k all the way up to infinity, and we have f order k derivative divided by k factorial times g order n minus k derivative divided by n minus k factorial. And we see here that we can take this thing outside the first summation operator. So we have the sum over k of f order k divided by k factorial times the sum over n equals k to infinity of g order n minus k derivative divided by n minus k factorial. And a renaming of the index variable for the second sum would be pretty insightful here. We could just name it the sum over m from 0 to infinity of g order m derivative divided by m factorial. And this thing is being multiplied by another sum, that's the sum over k of f order k derivative divided by k factorial. And we know exactly what these two things are. This sum over here is the exponential derivative of the function f of x. And this thing here is just the exponential derivative of the function g of x. So we have this really neat result, the exponential derivative of a product of functions equals the product of exponential derivatives. And I think that is a really cool result. It's extremely nice to look at. And I really did enjoy the analysis we performed today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Remember to drop me a follow on Instagram as well and support the channel if you want to on Patreon. Thank you. See you next time.